Hello viewers, this is Dr. P. Mary Anupuma, faculty from the Department of Biochemistry, St. Joseph's College for Women, Vishakapatnam. Today, we will be studying the topic, Interaction between Enzyme and Substrate. Contents of the presentation include the four different types of interactions between the enzyme and the substrate, the Fisher's lock and key hypothesis, and the Koshland's induced fit hypothesis. Enzymes and substrates, they specifically bind with each other. Enzymes, they have active sites which have unique amino acid sequence that enable the substrate to bind to it. And these substrates, they interact with the amino acids at the active site. Here, let us see the example where we have an enzyme which has the active site represented in the center having some unique amino acids. The substrate interacts with these specific amino acids at the active site and finally we get an enzyme substrate complex. The interactions are non-covalent. Then the type of interactions between enzyme and substrate, we have four different types of interactions. The first one is electrostatic interaction, second one is hydrogen bonding, third is van der Waals forces, while the fourth is hydrophobic interactions. Electrostatic interactions. These are the interactions between oppositely charged groups. For example, the carboxyl groups, they are attracted towards amino groups. The negative groups are attracted towards positive groups. And here at the active site, if we have a negative group, then it will be attracting the positive group on the substrate, thereby leading to enzyme substrate complex formation. Here is an example of the carboxyl group and the amino group, which are oppositely charged, leading to electrostatic interactions. Here, this is aspartic acid whose carboxyl group, which has a negative charge, it binds to or it leads to the formation of electrostatic interaction with the guanidino group of arginine. So this is indicating the formation of electrostatic bond or electrostatic interaction between aspartic acid and arginine. Hydrogen bonding. This hydrogen bonding, it is a dipole-dipole interaction where you see that a partially positively charged hydrogen atom, this forms a bond with partially negatively charged electron donors. So here this is the water molecule where you have hydrogen bonding. The negative electron donors, they have a pair of electrons. These donors, they can be oxygen as in the water or you have fluorine or even nitrogen. And these red dots, they are indicating the hydrogen bond between oxygen and hydrogen. The third type of interaction is van der Waal interaction or van der Waal forces. These van der Waal forces, these are very weak non-covalent interactions and they are formed again between two oppositely charged atoms due to a transient uneven electron distribution in the groups. Say this is the enzyme which has the active site having three different amino acids and the group which is added is the substrate. So this binds with the active site through some van der Waal forces. So here you see that for a stable enzyme substrate complex to be formed, it requires very strong bonding between the enzyme and the substrate at the active site. And this will result only when the total count of such van der Waal interactions are more. The fourth type of interactions are hydrophobic interactions. These are non-polar and they are water repelling or we call them as hydrophobic that is water repelling in nature. 
the groups that are involved they have long carbon chains and these long carbon chains they repel the water and during this process they come together so here we can see a protein consisting of both hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic amino acids those which are hydrophobic amino acids they usually are towards the interior while the hydrophilic amino acids are towards the exterior during the process of folding these hydrophobic amino acids they come together and this interaction you call it as the hydrophobic interaction and generally these hydrophobic groups they are very much deeply seated in a protein fischer's lock and key hypothesis emil fischer in the year 1890 he tried to explain the binding between the enzyme and substrate according to him he compared the enzyme with the lock and the key to the substrate how we have one key for a single lock in the same way he says that one enzyme will specifically act on one particular substrate according to fischer substrate it has some binding groups which interact with the binding site of the enzyme and it binds to the catalytic site and this will result in the enzyme substrate complex once this is formed this will lead to the formation of product so enzyme is specifically binding to the substrate at this binding site and catalytic conversion is taking place at the catalytic site there is one drawback with this particular hypothesis that is it does not consider the flexibility of enzyme there are some enzymes like hexokinase which are flexible with respect to substrate which is not explained koshland's induced fit hypothesis this hypothesis was proposed by koshland in the year 1958 and this has overcome the drawbacks of the lock and key hypothesis according to this the enzyme undergoes conformational changes that is it undergoes changes in the tertiary structure which has been confirmed during the studies by x ray diffraction method and here they explain the reasons for these conformational changes they occur when the substrate binds to the enzyme and the reasons could be either expulsion of water or it can be changes in the linkages at the binding site between the enzyme and the substrate these two they can induce conformational changes in the enzyme koshland he agrees that enzyme and substrate they are complementary to each other and the active site fits only the specific substrate but he says that the enzymes are soft they are floppy they can adjust they can undergo conformational changes while the substrates they are rigid and this change in the shape is done to fit the substrate at the active site resulting in a stable enzyme substrate complex formation here is an illustration of koshland's induced fit hypothesis this is the enzyme which has an active site that has some amino acids that interact with the substrate as the substrate arrives it binds to the active site this binding it induces conformational changes in the substrate and finally you have a stable enzyme substrate complex formation now let us see the example of the enzyme hexokinase hexokinase is the enzyme which phosphorylate hexoses resulting in hexose 6 phosphate and is the best example for induced fit hypothesis 
So this enzyme, it has the active site having specific amino acid sequence. When a substrate goes and binds to it, say for example, this is one hexose which is binding to it. This binding will induce conformational changes in the binding site of the particular hexose 6 phosphate. You can see the variation in the amino acid sequence resulting in hexokinase hexose 1 complex. When some other substrate, same hexose, when it also goes and binds to the enzyme, that induces again conformational changes. The hexokinase active site, it shifts in such a way that it binds to the substrate resulting in hexokinase hexose 2 complex formation. And here we can clearly see that the conformation has changed. There is a change in the conformation at both the hexokinase hexose 1 complex as well as hexokinase hexose 2 complex. This will lead to the respective product formation. Let us summarize what we have studied. The enzyme substrate interactions, the four different types of enzyme substrate interactions, starting with electrostatic interactions, hydrogen bonding, then we have Van der Waals interactions followed by hydrophobic interactions. Then we have also studied the Fischer's lock and key hypothesis and also the Koshland's induced fit hypothesis. Thank you.